So I got this late February and for about two weeks I didn't use it in the middle of March when it got really cold. I did use it right away in February. It's actually warm enough. Um, so I'd say it's been heavily used almost every day except for rain days. So maybe once or twice a week I haven't been able to use it. Um, but it's been heavily used. I have more than an acre to mow. This is the Luba 5000H. I have dropped these as low as possible using the manual mowing mode. And we can take a look and see most of these are still loose. That's what I expected. I've checked them a number of times. This is the only one stuck. But look at that. It's able to just come right out. Yeah, if you push the bumper, it still beeps. The camera light is still on too, but as you'll see, I have the security key removed. So, I think I'm safe. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, all of these pretty much just need to spin them around. This is what I've done in the past, and it'll come right off. So, one good spin. Whew, they're still sharp. It's almost hard to tell which way these things spin. I'm assuming the light side is probably the way they're cutting. Because that would constantly kind of clean itself as it hits grass and twigs. It would dull it, but it would also keep it clean. Um, it's clearly gotten a lot of, I don't know if you'd want to call it sap or... Whatever the juice is, probably from dandelions. Some of this stuff actually looks shiny and feels sticky to the touch. And I, there's just a ton of dandelions right now. And so I think that's what all that is. That's what it looks like. I'm going to see how good I can clean this up and apply a coating to it. We'll see if it works. So I took the blades off the whole disc it was very easy, um, three or four out of the six, just, I just put the included screwdriver, I just used the included screwdriver right on them, it was no problem. Um, two of them, I just took a screw, I took the pointy part and just cleaned it out and then it worked. No problem taking it off and I'm using the included uh, stakes to, as a scratcher to pop the grass off. We'll see how long that lasts until I switch to something else. But I wanted to use plastic and not metal to scrape. Just to show you, uh, just a nice thin layer. Just, I'm doing it with my left hand, the videotape with my right. But that's what it looks like. Just popped right off. Okay, these guards do not come off because they're riveted in. Those are not hex screws. Um, but you just remove these three using the same included screwdriver and this whole piece will pop off just like that. The pieces are getting really small. Some of them even appear a little bit shiny. Um, but I'm going to take them, I'm going to take this mower outside and blow it off because I'm worried about them falling into this crevice. Alright, my son is getting bored so I'm going to spray it down, call it a day, let it dry off. All right, it's the next day, and this is what it looks like after spraying it off. I don't think the water pressure did much good. There is a little diagram right here with a pressure washer, a big X saying don't use a pressure washer. So I don't think normal water pressure is going to do much good, at least for what I have stuck on mine. So I'm going to try a couple different things. I'll let you know what works. All right, so I tried the uh, Brilla pad or the scotch Bright pad or the scoring pad, whatever you call it, and a microfiber cloth. Uh, the microfiber cloth worked really well at taking some of the fine film off of this. When I went to some of these harder parts, it didn't do much. It seemed like it would take a ton of elbow grease to make it happen. I put the Brilla or the uh, scotch Bright pad on there and it seemed like it would work okay, but it was cleaning up the easy stuff. The hard stuff was going to take a lot of rubbing back and forth. So then I put the um, microfiber cloth on there just to see, and it looked like the scotch Bright pad was leaving a little bit of scuffing, which is actually the purpose of it. 
So I'll be using the scotch Bright pad right before I put my treatment on there in order to scuff things up so that way the paint will adhere. But I'll get to that later. But for now, I'm going to try a uh, magic eraser in very hot water uh, with some normal uh, dish soap because it's got the degreasing agent. I'm hoping that'll get some of this sticky stuff off of there because that is not rust. That is just this right here. It's dandelion juice. Well, this works so amazing I had to show you. I think I can do it even with my left hand. See all that on there? And I had rubbed that with paper towel, microfiber cloth. Of course, it could just be the water. We're gonna see what it looks like when uh, dry. But boy, does that look good. So, yeah, I was right. Magic eraser with some dish detergent. I will check it with a microfiber cloth and see if it does the same. Maybe it's just the soap and water. I'll let you know. Yeah, it's just the soap and water. Even with a microfiber cloth, you don't need to go out and get the pads if you don't want to. Let me just show you what it takes. This is a, I'm not putting nearly as much pressure. I'm using my left hand. This is a little bit harder, but you can see it's, it's taking it off. So that's another option. It appears just the soapy water. Again, I made it hot and just used whatever dish detergent my wife had. It said it had a degreaser on it. I would think all of them do these days. So I'm sure it's the degreasing agent that helps lift that stuff off. I'm hoping maybe I can even take some of this off. If I'm really feeling up to it, I might put a paint job on some of these areas that are really heavily nastied up. So as I go, I'm rotating around for a couple reasons. One, to let the detergent sit on the plastic a little bit, help lift off the dirt. And for two, I've got a fan blowing and uh, that's helping dry things off. So this is now dry again and I can see where I missed some spots. Um, so that, I would just recommend rotating around. The hardest part for me has been cleaning down here, which uh, probably shouldn't try to paint but I don't know I'm kind of thinking I might it's one of the dirtiest areas aesthetically so uh, it'd be sure nice to have some protection on there I know I could buy fenders but if I could just paint it that would not cost me anything all right I'm gonna rinse this off with water and then go to work on these these are probably the most important they're actually what prompted me to start this whole project because they were really getting built up in here. They've, I've already cleaned out a lot, but they were the first things that I noticed getting gunked up. And then if you see the grass is supposed to go through there, but as it closes in, then the grass doesn't go through anymore. And uh, then the discs are not cutting to the edges. And so these things are actually, uh, you're actually creating flat spots in the grass here, and then the grass will pop up the next day, looking like you missed it. So anyway, these are really important to me anyway. Uh, they seem to be what holds the most gunk. So I need to get these really clean and really covered in something that will reject grass. So I'm going to rinse this boy off and let it dry while I go to work on these. This part is an absolute nightmare to clean. It's smooth on the bottom, but the part where grass is going to get stuck is just absolutely horrendous. Let me get it in the light get out of it. there we go look at that I mean it's like a little prison for grass and the grass is never coming back out I think I'm gonna have to soak it in water so what I figured out was letting them soak definitely loosens it all up but it's still a lot of gunk to try to get out with a rag or a pick so now the hose comes in handy put it on jet and the stuff is loosened up enough it'll take it off what it won't take off is that nasty rusty looking gunk whatever it is it, it feels a lot like sap but it, I guess it's just dandelion juice stuff that comes out of the stems of those things so basically I think I have the process down uh, pick off all the big stuff so that way when it soaks it can get down to the the bottom of all of the leftover grass and then once it's done soaking spray it off with the hose then you have to just get a wet soapy rag on it to wipe the last of the gunk off 
which I don't know if I'll get it all, but hopefully I'll get enough of it so I can get some uh, some lubricant paint on here to keep it uh, hopefully from sticking as much. We'll just have to wait and see. Two things. I was wondering about right and left. You can see there's an R there, so that should be for the right. Um, if not, I'll just figure it out. It's they're, they're obviously not the same. See how this is longer than that? Pretty sure the long side goes to the front, but I could be wrong. I'll double check it. Um, anyway, the other thing is I did Luba first, these second, so that way Luba could dry. That might have been a mistake because these need a lot of soaking time. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'm not really sure how clean I need to get it. My concern is that, yeah, it'll stick probably in all the places that matter. The corners don't matter that much, but if that's the place that the paint starts to chip, then it can continue chipping on up to the places that matter more. So anyway, that's my thinking. So I'll probably try to get them pretty clean. Um, but maybe it's not necessary. Uh, also, I'm thinking if I just fill all this stuff up with paint, boy, I might run out. So stay tuned for that. I'll definitely give my thoughts. I only bought a small can because I didn't want the nozzle to get all gunked up. So I figured for future years or whatever, future applications, I'd just buy again. But I'll definitely let you know if you need to buy more. I think I'll just have to set my perfectionism aside. Even putting the steak in the rag, it's not doing much better than just my fingers. And some of this I think it might just have to live with and spray paint over. I'm going to let it soak while I try to clean up the next one with the steak. And then probably just roll with it and go ahead and spray paint. Alright, despite letting this dry in the sun, and leaving it uh, right side up there's still a little bit of water that needs to be dabbed up what I'm gonna do is scuff everything with this Brilla pad just really lightly I don't if the if what I put on here doesn't work I really don't want the grass to have an ability to stick even better so I'm not gonna go crazy with it but scuff it up a little bit and then wipe it down with a microfiber cloth with alcohol and the alcohol will ensure that all of the water is removed. I'm no painter. I quite frankly hate painting. So don't take my advice, but this is what I've done. Looks like you can see it's gone a little light gray. Most of that should just be dust. And so I'll wipe it down now. And all this will probably go away. I don't have any alcohol on the towel yet. It's totally dry. This will tell you just how scuffed up it is because it's picking up the dust and yeah it's not turning shiny so yeah it is truly scuffed up. Yeah okay some of that's coming off some of it's not. So I think that's probably about right. So this is what I'm going to spray it with and uh, I think I'm ready to start spraying. Uh, I probably over taped but I'm not very good with a spray can, so better safe than sorry, I guess. So one way to clean this dry lubricant is with alcohol. So I'm using alcohol to get rid of all the water. It will displace the water and the alcohol will evaporate really fast. Standard way of cleaning anything you want to stick really well. But you got to make sure you get it all out because if not, it's made to somehow either deteriorate, break down, remove this lubricant. So I'm making sure I get it all out and blowing it really dry. All right, this is my final result. Hopefully it's good enough to take the paint. It's not perfect. I think this is how I'll do my final coat, really get it to soak in, maybe even knock them over and let it really soak into those corners. So I'll probably knock it down like that and let it dry like that. Um, I haven't run out of spray yet, so, so far so good. I think I'm done. Don't plan on doing anything to the discs yet. We'll see. I'm so mad at myself, I just ran out. I'm gonna go see if Home Depot has more. I bought this can on Amazon. 
now that I have a second can, I'm going to do some more coats. You can see where it pulled right there. It's definitely tilted that way, so it makes sense. It's pulling in all of the low spots. So I'm not going to focus too much there. I'm going to focus up there. This took the biggest beating, so I want a lot of coats on there, and it runs off. So I'm going to try to do light coats, let it dry, light coat, let it dry, and go like that. So now I got it coated. You can see it drying. It dries very quickly. You could probably watch it, see how it disappears. There's a gentle breeze coming through here. That's certainly helping. But that's what the can says. It says dries very fast, dries in seconds. So that's what's happening. I'm letting it dry and then adding some more, trying to get lots of extra coats. I tilted it back the other way so that way it would run back here because I wanted more coverage here. You can see it running. It seems to spread really well though as far as spray paints go. I haven't used a lot of different kinds, but it actually seems pretty good. I don't, I'm not really too worried about these runs though. It should just add even more protection, but I have a feeling when it dries, it's all gonna just kind of spread out anyway because it's a lubricant. Um, but anyway, I am getting really close to the end of the can, but I think I'm just gonna call it good. All right, it's been a couple hours later and it appears to be dry. You can see it did leave some runny spots. Again, I'm not too worried about it. It seems like you just have extra protection in those thick spots. Um, I would expect to pick up some graphite. I believe the way it lubricates is by releasing its graphite. So it slowly wears off, but it also lubricates at the same time. It basically, if you know graphite powder is very good lubricant, I believe this paint basically just turns to powder as it's uh, it's rubbed or any type of abrasive action happens so that's how it works is my guess I don't know for sure but I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this and so that way I can mow it tomorrow and uh, I'll probably try to do a time-lapse of the mowing and then show what it looks like when it's done well I was turning this over to switch it from the hex head to Phillips head and it just pulled apart so that's a little disappointing I'll see if I can fix it I'll, I was planning on using it to remove these Phillips screws. Uh, if not, obviously I've got Phillips screwdrivers, but I just figured let's just see how it works. I know a lot of people had problems with theirs on Luba 1. So far, these Luba 2 screws seem much better. Uh, on Luba 1, I had issues with these getting stuck after just a couple weeks of mowing, but these don't seem to get stuck. So I don't know what they changed, but. Anyway, I'm going to see what it takes. I'll check back in. No problems removing any of these, not even a bit of stripping while doing it. Um, I'm not saying anybody's doing it wrong. Uh, in fact, I suspect they're probably using different screws depending on which batch of Luba you got. But these have a like a washer on top and a little flat part. Don't know what the others look like because I never removed the blades from my Luba 1. But yeah, no problems for me. With more forethought, I would have let these soak, but I'm not trying to clean them or anything. But I got just enough out of the uh, can to spray them. I'm going to try to get one more spray out of it. I really don't think I'm going to bother with these. I'm just going to clean them. Debating whether to let them soak or not. What I would really like to do is get everything done tonight so that way I can mow in the morning. Your mileage may vary, but a five minute soak was enough for me to start scrubbing and it pretty much just wiped off. So I put them back in because I'm on baby duty right now, but I will probably just squeeze the microfiber cloth into some of these holes and get the rest out. But yeah, five minutes is enough time to break everything loose. Well, I spent way too much time cleaning these, so I'm going to try my best to get them dry. I'm not going to scuff them. They appear to be slightly more shiny than the bottom of the deck, so uh, I don't want to remove that shiny coating. Uh, after I said I wasn't even going to bother cleaning them, I'm going to try to get everything I can out of these two empty cans and see what happens. This seems safe. It might be why women live longer than men. And as they dry, I can see the stuff that I missed. Clearly things like that, that's right on top. If I scrubbed it hard enough, it should come off. It's basically 
basically the same spot on every hole. I just realized this side is dull, this side is shiny. This is the back side or the top side. This is the part that actually scrapes the ground, if you will. Um, anyway, just figured I'd point that out. And the sap did come off pretty well once I knew exactly where to scrub and just scraped it with my finger uh, behind a rag. I'm spraying one with the hose just wide open, the other with the hose plugged. We'll see which one works better. Uh, I'll mark it in later in this video whether or not I'm putting which one on the right side versus the left. Because you look at this two ways. Either I just lubricated the holes and they'll work better, or I just added spray paint to an already difficult situation. All right, the one with spray painted holes is going on the right. The one with plugged holes is going on the left. All the screws are back in. Man, that deck looks purdy. Uh, so maybe some fluid film on all the metal screws would be nice. But we'll see what happens. Ah uh, yes, I forgot about this. I meant to turn this thing over and spray from the bottom. Or, I'm sorry, spray from the top, but I ended up just leaving it upside down. So glad that I taped this up. Uh, really should have taped that one, I taped these. But man, uh, I, it was kind of dumb in the moment. Oh, I can reach it, I'll just hit it right now and leave it alone. And so I got a little spray right there. I think it should look pretty cool. Um, it's not perfectly even, nobody's gonna see both sides, I guess. Um, that should come off with alcohol. I will try that and see how it goes. Old painter's tape just sucks. Always use new stuff that sticks really well. Also, probably should have done a better job cleaning this area so that way it would stick better. Clean it with alcohol. That always helps with adhesion. Yes, alcohol takes it off. No, it's not a quick clean wipe. It is a bit of a mess. Thinking about switching to just ruining a microfiber cloth. I have a feeling that would soak it up a lot better. Also, as soon as the alcohol dries, it doesn't really come off anymore. So, I'm just using one rag, alcohol on one side, dry on the other smear it with the alcohol, it just smears, and then wipe it with the dry part. The microfiber cloth I was going to throw away anyway, the one that's kind of soaked in all of the grass and the uh, dish detergent, seems to work really well. It won't take this off because I haven't wiped it with alcohol, it appears. But some of the other stuff I had wiped with alcohol, and it wouldn't come off with the dry paper towel, it's coming off with this. So I guess remaking it wet will pull it off if it's been touched by alcohol. Yeah, so that combination is really easy to clean up. Wiped it with the alcohol, it just smears it everywhere. Pick it up with the wet microfiber cloth. Smeary mess with the alcohol wipe, and I think the uh, dry side of the paper towel, or the clean side of the paper towel, would just dry out the graphite too quickly, making it hard to wipe. Also, paper towels can only pick up so much, whereas microfiber is made to pick up. So, this seems to work quite well. Not a big deal. Finished product. I think it looks pretty good from a distance. Wish I could have done the bumper, but um, pure out of graphite lube. Plus, I'm sure that it would get cracked and popped off and look pretty bad after a little bit. So I wanted to explain why I chose to use the product that I'm using. You've seen it, the can, previously in the video, but it is a dry film lubricant, in particular one with graphite in it. So basically, I'll just give you the full rundown of how I do my research and how I came to this conclusion. First of all, since I bought a Luba, I was watching YouTube videos, so YouTube started pushing all things mowers at me, so... One of the things it pushed was a video that uh, the guy was doing a graphite paint on the bottom of his mower that was called Slip Plate, and it's made for mower decks. And so I just thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Seems kind of durable. Sent it to the Luba group, and everybody in there seemed to be using fluid film. And I noticed that the guy commented, you know, that graphite didn't last the whole season. It only lasts a certain number of mows. So that's interesting. So everybody was using fluid film, so I looked into fluid film. So I started looking into uh, 
mower deck comparison coatings. So videos on YouTube that would compare different coatings for mower decks. They're all steel decks though. And what I found from those were that they were mainly coming from the background of someone who would coat the underside of like trucks and cars and the products they were using were mainly those coatings. And so that is actually the group of products that fluid film is uh, fluid film also has competitors like CRC and PB blaster. Um, so PB blaster has a surface shield and they seem to be, you know, direct competitors. Some say it's better, whatever. I'm not going to get into all of that. I don't know that much about it, but I started looking at comparison videos specifically for, um, these undercoatings so I could have a better understanding of the product. And what I found was that they are basically a combination of a penetrating oil and a waxy material. In fact, my understanding is fluid film is made from like a type of wool wax, whatever that is. But basically, if you know anything about penetrating oils, they appear to basically soak into the metal and creep along them. Um, and so what makes these protective coatings is that they don't just creep, but they also create a waxy surface to them. So if you're coating the underside of your truck and you're in a salty area, then the salt is going to land in the wax and not directly on the metal. So that all makes sense, but it doesn't make a ton of sense for the bottom of mowers. And so I was actually looking at Home Depot's, um, reviews and comment section on PB blaster surface shield. And somebody specifically asked, how will this work to keep grass from sticking to my mower deck and PB blaster, their own customer service person replied and said, it's not going to, uh, this is basically made to stay wet and you should look into our dry lubricants. So I looked into their dry lubricants and I found a great video explaining the difference between their original dry lubricant spray and their graphite dry lubricant spray. And their original one also leaves kind of a waxy, uh, whatever you want to call it, residue behind. It's not supposed to be a wet, waxy surface, though. It's just a little bit of residue. It's not a big deal. It would still be dry. But the graphite one goes on like paint and doesn't come off. You can't rub it off. It doesn't come off with water. The only way to remove it is with alcohol, which you saw in this video. And that was very appealing to me. So I kind of came full circle. That's basically what the original product was that got me on this journey, which was called Slip Plate. I looked into that and it's just really hard to find. Um, you can't buy. I couldn't find buying quartz on Amazon or anything else using Google Shopping. So you basically have to buy a gallon of it if you wanted to apply it with a paintbrush. Um, the spray paint was very expensive and had lots of reviews about gunked up tips and things like that. So that's when I looked into other brands of graphite spray lubricant. Come to find out, one of the guys I'd watched for these comparison videos on the steel mower deck coatings had actually covered another brand called Magic graphite spray and it was also kind of like uh the slip plate it was a graphite lubricant but it was marketed for like steel deck undercoatings and things like that so it wasn't marketed as a lubricant it was marketed as a, uh, a slippery surface paint my guesses are very similar but maybe they would be a little thicker than what i bought but the uh, magic brand along just like the slip plate very difficult to find and buy at least for me i'm just in, in you know eastern shore north america so i have access to all the american brands like lowe's home depot amazon but even google shopping just doesn't turn up turn up many results um so anyway your mileage might vary um if you're looking for graphite lubricants i would say um maybe check out those brands. See if you can find a cheap slip plate or cheap magic. Um, they might be slightly better because they are specifically designed for mower decks. Um, if not, CRC has, I think a 20 ounce can for about 13 bucks. 
uh, might be a 12 ounce. Um, and then this PB blaster is uh, 698, I believe, at Home Depot. And it's a six ounce can. And uh, it has a ball in it when you shake it. I don't know if the other brands do or not. But I didn't have any trouble with the tip clogging. It's not very much. You can easily use up six ounces, as I clearly did. So I ended up going through two cans. So uh, no tip clogging or anything like that. So I would say it's a success, and I would recommend it um, to other people. As you'll see, I'm cutting um, my lawn right now. It has a ton of dandelions in it. So it is going to sap up all of that. So I'm a little worried. I'm kind of probably doing a little bit too hard on it because I, I don't think the graphite lubricant can reject the sap. I think it will reject fairly dry grass clippings. Um, and my guess is when the grass clippings dry, they'll fall off the graphite, whereas the uh, bare plastic, when they would dry, they would remain stuck. But the sap, I mean, I, I don't see any way of it coming off. It's basically going to just need to wear off. But you have a nice graphite backing to it, which, as I've explained before, my thinking is that it's designed to basically shed its graphite. And that is how it allows things to fall off of it or remain lubricated. So it's going to wear off with time, which all of these do. But... I, th I still think it's probably the most durable thing that I've found. Another really interesting idea, if I had a brand new mower, I would consider it. And that would be a ceramic coating like they use for cars. And I've seen some people do that and have pretty good results on their mowers. And so that's another option to look into. But I just, I don't see if you can't get your deck like perfectly clean and pressure wash it. I'm just not really sure. Uh, how well that would work. It's such a thin amount of material that goes on a ceramic coating. But it would be an interesting idea to compare and see see what it does. Um, my guess is that it would work way better on your first mow, but it's going to wear off faster because it's made for a car. It's not really made for having blades of stuff slung at it all the time. But... I don't know. I could be wrong. So anyway, that is what I, uh, I did and how, the conclusion that I came to that, uh, this seemed like it would be, uh, at least a good idea to try since everyone else has tried fluid film and it seems to have good results. But if somebody else would make a video, that would be great. And they can compare their results with fluid film and we'll compare to mine and see which one uh, worked better. I'd be happy to uh, switch um, once the graphite wears off. Um, so anyway, I hope that explanation made sense and helps you. All right, well, it finished mowing about 22,000 square feet. It is uh, late on Tuesday night. I finished this Sunday night. So starting Sunday night, I started having problems, and they persisted till this morning. It was weird, random, different problems. Anyway, I think I might make a separate video about that. But the main question is, how did it fare with the new coating? I already took a peek. Part of the problems yesterday, I had to look at it anyway, turn it over. So I, uh, I took a peek. I will say, these look great. They would have been covered in all of that nastiness but instead you don't see any of the discoloration so that's really nice I am too scared to put any water on it right now because I think that's part of the problem that I might have had I might have gotten some water where it shouldn't have I'm not really sure I'm gonna let it dry out just as much as possible but I will show you what it looks like now keep in mind what it was uh what it was mowing was dandelions. See those dandelions? So that was 22,000 square feet of dandelion. You'll see that in the video. Anyway, this is what it looks like. 
It actually looks pretty good in here. Um, I actually thought it would be a little bit worse. Um, in some ways it looks better than when I looked at it this morning. Uh, the black on the blades definitely wore more. It definitely cut some longer grass. Oh no. It definitely cut some grass this afternoon because none of this was in it when I checked before. Um, there's definitely some grass built up in here which is precisely what I wanted to prevent. So, that's a bit of a bummer. I don't really understand why it needs these. On the front it makes sense, on the back it seems like it should just be wide open. You can see what it looks like in there. I don't know that this tells us very much though. Um, I think I need to let it run for about a month and see how it looks. Um, I also think the dandelions are a big part of the problem. Once they go away and it's just grass, I think it will fare much better. Um, for those curious, you just spin these blades around and the grass tends to just fall right out. So, if you're looking for some easy maintenance, that's probably the easiest. I don't know how to prevent this. I don't see any coating. Um, sticky ones probably would make it worse. So, the coating I used is probably not making it worse. Um, I don't know that it would make it any better though. Um, just the physics of it. I don't see how. Uh, maybe a little bit of non-slip would help, but I just don't think that that really comes into play. There's some gunk on that one. Again, it's like sap from the dandelion, so that's what you're dealing with. But it definitely cut some grass this afternoon. When I looked at it this morning, uh, there wasn't any grass stuck in here. It was just dandelions. And so it had only been cutting dandelions yesterday. But today it must have found a pretty thick patch of grass. Uh, it also didn't have any grass on it on the top. I haven't treated the top yet. I would like to do a ceramic coat for the top, but there was no grass on it until tonight. My guess is the dew came in, and so now the grass is sticky and possibly luba got a little bit wet from dew, and that's why it's sticking now. So that's what it looks like.